our tables up there. Hey, look at who we see. I just turned on my camera. I just turned on my camera and look who I find. How's it going there, man? Good. Pretty good. Yeah, good to see you. Yeah. Good to be here. Hello. Hey, how you doing there, killer? Great. I like your balloon. That's really cool. You know what's so funny? I just turned this on. Like, about, like 10 seconds before I see you, I turn the camera on and there you go. Woo! Here I go. Policies haven't changed. I, quite frankly, do not believe that the you know, large majority of Washington have any idea how bad it really is. I mean, they've lived it with it for so long, and they always spin their way out of it and print their way out of it, and they get another reprieve and another bubble, but this is different this time. But the uh, people that attend rallies like this and meetings like this aren't going to be fooled. They are determined, and they want the government to cut back. But right now, with our experience last week with the continuing resolution, we had some votes that we should have passed overwhelmingly of them, and we didn't. They said, well, where are we going to cut? Sure. We have to cut everything. You just can't pick and choose and nibble away. You, we have to really change the philosophy of government is what I think has to be done. Well, as we move forward through the uh, election cycle here, I mean, Donald Trump obviously made his comments. I disagree with Donald Trump. I think, obviously, you'd be the greatest of all candidates. I'm a partial host, and I certainly Woo! salute you, sir, and I think a lot of other people here. Let's give Dr. Ron Paul and Congressman Ron Paul Woo! a nice round of applause. But seriously, sir, in the few moments that we have you here, talking about that possibility, I mean, we're always looking as talk show hosts to break news on shows, but uh, talk to us more about what might be in the works here. I mean, you come ahead in all these different polls, CPAC, I mean, you're the winner of all this. Uh, give us a little insight as to what might happen here in the next uh, year. Well, I, I wish I could, that I would know myself. I understand. But I, I truthfully am still sorting things out. I come to meetings like this, and I will be attending several meetings and uh, conferences up in Iowa as well as New Hampshire, mainly to try to sort it out. But it is not easy for me. It's very difficult. It's very difficult for somebody who believes in true liberty to exist, even just under these circumstances as a congressman in Washington. Sure. It's been a challenge. So it, it will be a, a, a big decision uh, for me, and I will have to make it eventually. But right now, I'm, I'm not quite ready to. Uh, Understood. So uh, time will tell. Last couple of questions. I know you have to leave. You're a busy man. But if we look now at, at what is going on in our country right now. Just give us, and for the listeners of our show that may just be tuning in, just give us, Dr. Paul, the specifics that you know from your side of the uh, political equation. What's the debt like? I mean, we hear all stories, 10 to 14 trillion. I mean, this is so horrible. None, none of our children or grandchildren could ever possibly pay this. It seems like we're on the path to ruin. Uh, just give us a better perspective of where we are, and, and, and finally, in a positive way, what do you see us really needing to do? We know we need to cut. <laughs> right. You're the expert. The, um, the odds of the, a government paying down debt like we have, the amount we have now, it's zilch. It's not going to happen. Governments always default. Federal governments, national governments always default by just printing money. And they give you your, they pay you back but they only give you money that doesn't work as well. So if they can have 50% inflation, half the debt is eliminated. So that's what Bernanke's working on. He's literally begging and pleading for inflation sure. so that the real debt goes down. But it's going to end badly. And, it, and we will have a dollar crisis. And uh, I think everything that's going on, whether it's Wisconsin or the Middle East, it's, it's sort of a deadlock. Uh, we've lived way beyond our means. We're not producing. We've destroyed the productive capacity of our country. We have people coming in our countries depending and living off what we do, but the, the federal government believes they can spend and the Federal Reserve System thinks they can print. It's going to end badly. Interest rates are going up. Prices are going up already. Oil Absolutely. rates are going Food up. Food is going up. Can everything. you imagine what it's going to be like under these circumstances? High unemployment rate, high inflation rate, high energy prices. That is a tax. The standard of living is going down. Now, the good news is that there's rumblings out there, and we see it at conferences like this, that people know something has to be done. So what I'd like, what I generally talk about is what it's supposed to be like. And I didn't invent what it's supposed to be like. I look to the Constitution and traditions, the history of liberty. Absolutely. We, we need limited government, emphasize individual freedom, have sound money, and have a government that protects our liberty, not to run our lives, not to police the world, and not to tell us how to live our personal lives. It's a simple formula, but that would solve all our problems.
Springs. Absolutely. You say it so well. Doctor and Congressman Ron Paul, I really appreciate your time, sir. I know you have to run uh, other engagements pressing here. But ladies and gentlemen, we are live here for the continuance of our hour here on the Tea Party Patriots American Policy Summit, located, of course, all day today and tomorrow here at the beautiful, and I say that again, a beautiful facility, a beautiful venue, the Phoenix Convention Center in the North Building. Dr. Ron Paul, a privilege and honor. for what you do for the United States of America. Appreciate that. Thank you, sir. Mike O'Connor, engineer.